Yes, people, another edition of Knights of the Round Table Discussion where we talk about all sports all the time. Got my guys, the truth and tooth with me. How we doing, people? Beautiful weekend, mate. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful weekend. As you can hear, the truth. Happy, happy as Larry, mate, after the results. We are going to be talking about the FA Cup. It's the FA Cup review. Two semis finals played at Wembley. First semi-final, uh, Arsenal versus Man City. Finished with Arsenal winning 2-0. And the second semi-final was Man United versus Chelsea. And Chelsea <laughs> won 3 one But we are <laughs> going to start off talking about the positive, And that was Arsenal. Arteta against Pep. The truth, I know you're happy. Talk to me, bro. What were your thoughts on the game? How did you feel? And uh, how do you think it all planned out? I want all those doubters, those Arteta doubters, to, to stick it away, me. Those saying that he's there to pick up calls for Pep. Those are saying that we were just going there just to lay our training program with Man City. No, no. We were going there to take over, not take part. And we've done it, fam. And I know it because i got faith in my boy. <laughs> Arteta, greatest coach in the world, Mark II, coming soon. Give him the funds. Okay, give him the funds, fam. I want the funds. I want the funds. Let's go out there and build in the squad, bruv. I'll tell you what. After the Liverpool game, I was actually disappointed in the Liverpool game because I don't like us playing like that, to tell the truth. I thought it was a smash and grab. Um, I thought we gave Liverpool too much respect. I, I'm just not used to us playing in such a horrible matter, you know, letting a team have 77% possession, us only scoring goals of their mistake. So I wasn't really happy. Um, but the Man City game, I could honestly say, even though we defended, we had more potency going forward. Our goals came from, you know, our first goal was like an 18 pass sequence, you know, finish off with a great cross and a goal. Great finish from Aubameyang. And then the second, again, decent builder play, very good count. We, had, we just have a lot more potency going forward in the Man City game. Um, but bro, and I, I think that's I... just down to... Can I just interrupt real quick, yeah? yeah? Because you say, no, no, no. you say you like the way Arsenal played, yeah? But I'm just yeah. quickly, I'm just having a look at the stats, yeah? And and it looked like, bro, it looked like... Like, if you're just going off the stats alone and you don't yeah. know the scoreline, it looks abysmal, bro. It looked Man City, 70% of the possession. They had 12 shots. Yeah, but... Two yeah. Target. Um, Arsenal had 30% possession. Uh, and they had five shots. But yeah, that's the thing, but, but stats, stats are misleading. Look, we're never, ever going to outplay Man City. We're talking about a team that's been developed for three years with the ball. Our team, we haven't been playing any type of football since God knows how long, since the Invincibles. So we're never, ever going to get the ball down and start passing around Man City. We have to play to our strength. And our strength was playing on the counter-attack. The, man. the difference between Liverpool and the Man City game is that, as I said, when we had the ball... We were a lot more potent. We were a lot more confident. Yeah, it was only 30%, but we did a lot more with it than the Liverpool game. Trust me, in the Liverpool game, we were just passing around the back, um, lumping it up. They were just coming back in waves and waves, and we kind of got lucky. But um, Man City game, as I said, the football was much better. Even though we were outclassed for most of the match, it was much better. It was much better. So Just, 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 just on that, I mean, Tooth brought up the whole stats and stuff, but I think if you do the eye test and actually watch the game, you could see what Arsenal had a plan. And mm. does a lot of credit need to go to Arteta for the way he sent the team out, the way how he set up? And obviously, he was the inside man. I mean, he's been Pep's number two, knows, <laughs> knows the tactics, knows how mm -hmm. Pep wants to play, and he essentially nullified it. I mean, mm -hmm. City's always going to have the possession. They had a couple of chances. One that stands out was the Sterling one where he put it yeah. wide. That's but probably, over, probably overall, that. I wouldn't say that Arsenal were backs to the wall, mm -hmm. defenders sliding all over the gaff. Don't get me wrong, last mm -hmm. 10, 15 minutes, yeah. But yeah. in a game where in which everyone expected Arsenal to absolutely, absolutely get trampled over, um, Arteta did a little uh, mini masterclass on the... Uh, it's the apprentice against the master and he came through. This is what I want to just say. And this goes out, you know, personally to all the Tottenham fans and all the Jose Mourinho fans. When the papers say 
Jose masterclass when they did a smash and grab. You know, that was not a masterclass. That was like a hit and hope, get out of the park, that kind of thing. What Arteta did on Saturday was a masterclass. If I have to break it down tactically, you know, you'd be, you'd be seeing top football in a totally different way. But I'm just going to keep it simple. The fact that Man City only had one shot on goal, and that came from Amara's chance when he cut in, and it was a great save from Martinez, that says a lot. One shot on goal. Martinez only had to make one save in the whole game. And that was because the way Arteta, as you said, he played under Pep, um, studied under Pep. He knew what was coming. Every time Man City made a change, substitution, Arteta straight away, tactically, changed things up. Um, so 100% of the credit goes to Arteta. That victory was not happening any other way without him. And um, as I said a long time ago, I had full faith in Arteta. He studied under Pep. He studied under Wenger. When he was playing, people called him the gaffer because he was, his knowledge about football was on point. Um, but yeah, definitely, 100% of the credit goes all, to, all the way to Arteta. And it was... It, yeah, go, go to you, go. Yeah, I want to ask you this, yeah. If, because I, I'm just curious to know how high is Arsenal's ceiling with Arteta if the Arsenal, you know, the... The Arsenal show, what we're used to seeing from Arsenal in transfer windows and season by season, if it continues the same way as we're all accustomed to. Like, how high is Arsenal ceiling? Do you think it'll like be the top four? Because I'm it's promising. Like, you, see, yeah. you see, you know, the, the, the only counter I have to, to your point is, like, you see these performances like they put in against City. You know yeah. what I mean? And, they, and it gives you, if you're an Arsenal fan, it gives you hope. But is, is that just uh, one, one of a few? Do you know what I mean? Is that... Yeah, no, of course. Of course. Like, I, is, I, that, uh, yeah. is that a thing or is that going to be on a consistent basis? Yeah. I fully understand. Um, the way you have to compare it is literally Klopp's first season in charge of Liverpool. You can see the similarities where the culture has to change. The culture has to change. Within Arsenal, we were weak. It was depressing. Our players were weak. Our managers were weak. The board were weak. Um, our fans were weak. I'm not going to lie. Our fans were weak. Complaining, not getting behind the team. Everything was weak. So, for me, the start is Arteta changing the culture of not only the team. He has to change the culture of the fans. And he has to um, change the culture, hopefully, of the board as well. Because we can't keep going through you know, transfer windows like we've been going through. Um, before I used to say in terms of teams the team is only as strong as its weakest player but I don't even think that's the case no more the team is only as weak as the unit that it's in look at Jordan Henderson Jordan Henderson <laughs> is that can see TJ put it says I'm about to say bro this is this is the truth like reference every single time every <laughs> single time bro. Yes, every Jordan, single time, Jordan Henderson <laughs> Julian Henderson is the wackiest player that I've ever seen on the football pitch. But, but, this is the thing, this is the caveat. Put him in that Liverpool side, he looks like freaking Zidane because he's in a unit that works for him. He works for that unit. Henderson is a world beater. People are talking to him. Get <laughs> Imagine, yeah, two years ago, you said Julian Henderson is in line to get Premier League player of the season. I would have slapped you across your face, fam. But he's in, he's in tools for it. So it's like, you know, the team is only as strong as the unit. And as fans, I'm guilty of it as well. I've been guilty of it. I've cut Xhaka to, to nothing. I've cut um, Mustafi, David Luiz, a few of our players. But I think that needs to stop. And uh, we need to fully get behind the team. All for one and one for all. Yeah, truth. I wanted to ask you though because you did uh, <laughs> mention David Luiz. We won't call him yeah. his nickname because he was um, he was immense on hey, Saturday. He, he went from sideshow Bob to Heath Lever Joker, fam. Everyone was <laughs> everyone was giving him credit that game. Why so serious? <laughs> no, he he was immense. I mean, to a, to a man, everybody yeah. in the team perform levels like there was no lower than a seven out of ten from anybody in that game but seeing that i mean it was 
Davin Luiz, it was Mustafi, and I think it was Kieran Tierney who, who, who was playing uh, the left centre back. How does Arteta build from there with those sort of cent- what, those centre backs? We know what they're capable of on a good day, but uh-huh. there's too many bad days. Yes, of course. So, um, from, uh, from Arteta's uh, yeah. point of view, in terms of linking to what Tooth said about the board, what does what he do in that sense? Um, there's only so much you can coach. Um, what can't happen is just big games. We just can't keep on giving away chances, giving away errors. And these players, unfortunately, no matter how many good games they have, they have that bad game in them. You cannot fully coach it out of them um, at this point in their career. You can't teach your old dog new tricks. You know, Mustafi's, what, 27, 28? You know, he's already fully grown. I um, couldn't believe how young he was. Because <laughs> he didn't play like that. He played like some, you know. <laughs> but, you know, David Luiz, 33. Um, so you can't really re-coach these guys and get rid of all the errors no more. So the whole point, I think the way he builds in it, is by obviously we've got Saliba coming in. Um, Mary's got to come back, but we don't know how he's going to come back. Holding, I think, is integral. And we just have to get the young players and hopefully the older players can, you know, slowly and slowly integrate them into the team. And that's the only way because I don't see we have a long-term future with Mustafi, Luis, you know, I forgot Socrates is still... <laughs> Socrates he's, still well, he's, still. Miss, he's, just, he's a benching. He's a benching. Yeah, so I don't know if he's injured or what, but these players, they, they don't have a future underneath us, um, under Arteta, because Arteta's a coach. He's actually a coach. You know, we have a discussion between coach, different between coach and manager. Arteta's a coach, and he gets the best out of coaching players and players learning from it. So going forward, for the short term, they're good to teach the youngsters. But in the long term, mm-mm, we do have to strengthen. Even if it's just flipping signing Nathan Aki from Bournemouth or um, Dunk from Brighton or something like that, you know, there's decent players out there that don't make errors, you know. Mm. <laughs> so I hear yeah. that. I hear that. And then finally, because I know, as I said, it was a great weekend for you. Two more points. Yeah. Um, the man. That we all call Mister Abama Blood Clot, yeah. <laughs> Abama. Yeah. I mean, two wonderful goals. I mean, he actually missed the sitter when it was no nil. Nah, <laughs> missed that one on one. Hey, the- everyone was cussing, you know, because we know we're not going to get chances against City. So <laughs> see, everyone was like. <laughs> but I mean, he it just goes to show the importance of him and yeah. what what he brings to the team. Mm-hmm. So again. And he's a leader because he is in his 30s, so he's got the experience. Um, do you think that the way how Arteta is trying to build the team, the style of play, the system, mm-hmm. and if Arsenal offer him the money that he wants, will he choose to stay as he can see there's some form of progress and something that he wants to be a part of? Um, I'm hoping that he does see progress. Um, but as I've mentioned before, I don't, I will not begrudge him if he wants to go and win trophies. Um, building a team takes time. Um, we've probably got about a three to five year time frame. By then, he's 33, 35. I mean, if he was at like 24, 25, 26, then yeah, I could see him saying, you know what, I could stay in certain eventually. But at 30, you're, he's probably thinking, you know what, my time's running out. I've got to be playing Champions League. I have to be winning stuff. Maybe for when when the FA Cup might consider it, might he might think um to stay. But as I said, I don't begrudge him if he leaves. Um I hope the board do go all out to try keep him. But if he leaves then we just have to start up again and you know, we're we're still at the beginning of the building process. So it's not like it'll be a huge, huge loss. Um it'd be a big loss because he's guaranteeing you thirty goals, but no one's bigger than a, than a team. I hear that, I hear that. And um, just uh, finally to wrap up on the uh, FA Cup. Uh, FA Cup final against um, Chelsea. What are your expectations for for Two, that game? 2017 all over again, you know. We beat Man City in the semis. Onwards to Chelsea in the final. Um, just played, you played them in the final, in a final last year. It wasn't the FA Cup final. But yeah, we need revenge for that. Final. 
I, I hope Arteta goes and shows him that tape and be like, look, you have to avenge this. Um, I would have preferred to play United because I prefer to be in control of our game. I think against Chelsea, we may let them have more of the ball. But, but I'm, not, I'm not afraid of this Chelsea side right now. Um, their team, even though they've done amazing this season, their team levels are, are about the same. In terms of their defense, their defense isn't great. Um, they got youngsters playing. When you talk about Mount Pulisic, um, I know Tammy didn't play, but you know he could come in. So I'm not as fearful as the, of their team, but I can't at this moment in time. I can't predict it. I really cannot predict it because um, I think the teams are that close together. I know the table doesn't show that, but I think if they play their best performance, they're very close together. So I can't really can't really give a prediction, but. I'm hoping for the win, obviously. I would love to win the FA Cup. It's my favourite competition. Um, it's the first competition I saw when I came to this country. So I love the FA Cup. And being 14 times champions, Arteta's first trophy, I would love it. I would love it. 100%. And uh, yeah, happy days for Arsenal. And we're going to move on to unhappy days. The main part. <laughs> the main bit. Unhappy days. Talking. I've got some questions for you, TJ. Um, <laughs> obviously, yesterday it was a 3 1. I don't even know it was why it was 3 1. But yeah, it was a 3 1 win to Chelsea against Manchester United in the FA Cup semi final. Chelsea outplayed Man United all over the park. There was nothing that could be done. Go ahead. <laughs> Ooh, what a game. Um, actually, the joke is, it wasn't, it wasn't even what a game. It was actually rubbish in the first half. You, but... you go now, Tooth, ask, ask him a question. I got my, my, I got my questions ready. So if you've got anything you want to know about the match yesterday, go ahead. You're up first. Oh, he's breaking up again. Oh, man. Yeah, far away, man. Go ahead. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead, yeah. Okay, TJ, first of all, I want to get your thoughts on yeah. the game. You're good. I want to get your thoughts on the game. Um, obviously, the first half was, wasn't a great quality first half. Both sides came in with five at the back. Um, obviously, Chelsea's five at the back was different. They were actually playing three at the back, and then obviously the wing back. I think United were actually playing five at the back, <laughs> which is the difference. Um, I, I want to know your thoughts. On the game, first of all, David De Gea, everything. Well, look, as a game, on, on a whole, Chelsea dominated from start to finish. Um, everything about the game from Man United was pathetic. Nothing really happened. I mean, the, the first five minutes, you could see what was going to happen. I think the biggest shock for Oli is that he tried to use a system that um, he used previously against Chelsea. What he didn't expect is for Fat Frank to <laughs> use the same ta same system that he used. So not obviously it was a three four three that Chelsea used, but United yeah. it was a three at the back system. Yeah. Once that goes out the window, there's nothing left because Fat Frank knows what he's doing. He has a system, he has a plan, and basically it was individuals versus a team. And the fact that Oli changed the team, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog was in there. Um, <laughs> anyway, him. Yeah, um, the, three, the three in midfield with Matic, uh, Fred and Bruno. And then the five yeah. at the back, obviously Brandon Williams had to come in because Luke Shaw was yeah. injured. Um, Bai was our best player before he got taken out front and back. And the head, bro. I don't know what it was <laughs> that they aimed for, but he was actually the best player on the pitch until yeah. uh, until he got concussed off. And then uh, Wan Bissaka was awful. Like I, it was a terrible, terrible performance. And I, the thing is, I didn't have a problem with Oli yeah. resting players because we just played Palace. Some players were tired, and he's been playing the same team. I think that was like seven games in a row, or some some madness like that. Yeah. What I have an issue with is that when you not only change the players, but then you change the system, uh -huh. right? You're going to have issues. P 
purely because you don't have tactics, mm-hmm. you don't have a plan, and the players that you bring in aren't of the caliber to win you the game individually. Mm-hmm. Right? So my whole thing is, is that these guys should have been said, look, boom, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go and play this system, blah, 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 patterns of play. All it was, was let Chelsea have the ball and counter-attack, which we have seen. That's how it was before lockdown. It was let other teams have the ball and counter-attack. And Chelsea showed it. Bruv, listen, when I tell you, yeah, this is how I know Fat Frank, even though he's in the beginning of his career, man is levels above Oli. Fat Frank watched what Southampton did to us, mm-hmm. right? He also watched what Crystal Palace did to us in the second half. This mm-hmm. United team, all you have to do is press them high and that's it, the game's over. Because they don't know what to do. They don't know what positions to get into yeah. when they're trying to do the triangles. They don't even do triangles, bro. It's just side to side. Harry Maguire try, tries to dribble out from the back thinking he's Beckenbauer, but man's out here <laughs> looking like Jason Roberts, bruv. And then he, try, he plays that stupid cross-field pass and then you got Son at the Hedgehog running into no man's land and then Bruno has decided in the last three games that he wants to play second striker. <laughs> so he's not dropping in. So that's why Chelsea... How are you playing 3-4-3 three, three against 3-5-2 three, and your midfield is getting overrun? <laughs> how does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. And that's because A, Bruno wasn't dropping into the midfield and B, the players don't know what to do. They haven't got a clue. And for me, don't be wrong, FA Cup is a, is a luxury. But if you're in the semi-finals, you might as well go and win it. But my whole thing is, it's not even the fact that we lost, it's still the way that we lost. It is the way that we lost. And bro, I said it to you on the last one, De Gea, <laughs> time's up. I am a, I was a big defender of the hair. And I said he should have the contract, give him yeah. the money, because especially especially after what he did against you lot in, uh, what yeah. was it, 17-18? Was it 17-18? Yeah. The free one at the Emirates. Yeah. yeah, especially after that, I was like, give him whatever he wants. When Roman mm-hmm. had to come in for him, I was glad the fax machine broke. Like, <laughs> I was glad the judge on the fax machine worked. But since then, it's like, man, yeah. like, all right, cool. I've got my money now. I'm just going to yeah. kick back and relax. Because I know that I've got this. Ramiro's been here for time, so they're not going to drop him, me for him. And as far as I'm concerned, I can do whatever I want and no one's going to do anything about it. And he just looks yeah. like he does not care. He does uh-huh. not care. The, fir- the first one, it was difficult. Like, it's difficult to adjust, but as a goalkeeper, yeah. you should save it. But it w- was at him and it wasn't moving at that much place. Yeah. Bro, the second one, nah. Bruv, do you know how you know the, the goalkeeping was absolutely shocking? Because, right. bruv, if you look back at the game, look at Mason Mount's face when it goes I in. I know, I know. Mason, Mason Mount, was, looking, Mount looking biased, bruv. was the most surprised person in the world <laughs> yeah, the shot when it went shot. in, bruv. It like, was not a great shot. And, uh, again, bro, De Gea hasn't played in the FA Cup since 2018. Since 2018, I think we played Chelsea in the final. He hasn't played yeah. since, right? So why did Romero get dropped? He hasn't done anything wrong. He's the cup goalkeeper. Um... So, so why did he get dropped? Oh, listen. <laughs> As I said, I don't even mind losing. I don't mind losing, but it's the way that you lose. And these guys went yeah. out with a whimper, bro. They went out with a whimper. This... Fridge on toes, bruv. I'm not going to stop calling him it, bruv. It's like... <laughs> Maguire, by the way, our fans. Maguire, Maguire. <laughs> Fridge on toes, bruv. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I think it was the concussion. I think it was the concussion <laughs> with Eric Bailly that messed him up. Because, <laughs> bro, he looked... When he was dribbling, yeah, and he, I don't even like Harry Maguire dribbling with the ball anyway, but when he was dribbling, yeah, yeah man looked like he was on, he was on ecstasy, bruv. He didn't know... <laughs> What was going on? Like, he brought shocking, like, the own goal. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing you could do about it. I know a lot of people try to blame the game for the third one. Bruv, it's mm. too close. There's nothing you I can know. do about yeah, it. But, bruv, everyone was atrocious. Juan Bissaka, we can see why he doesn't go forward. Because, and I'm a big Juan Bissaka fan, but yeah, in the no. summer, he's got to... Well, we're not going to have a summer because of the season, but he's got yeah. to work on his technique and going forward because he don't need to work oh. in defending. He don't need to work on it because he's got yeah. it. But I think... The main things out of that game for me, because I know I've gone on for time. The main things that, that in that game for yeah, me good. were 
There was no steps. This show, Chelsea showed everything that United lack in terms mm-hmm. of strength and depth, right? And having a, a coach, right? Because Frank sat them down and said, okay, we're going to high press. We're going to move that ball sharp, sharp, sharp. And what he also did is he said, um, I, can't remember, I think it was either Jorginho or Kovacic. Every time Bruno got the ball, there was someone on him. So he could not play. So they knew what to do. They right, knew yeah. what they were doing. And they were uh-huh. like, yeah, push the wing back, the, the wing backs high. And we're going to, bruv, it was like Usman versus Masvidal, bruv. We're just going <laughs> to smother them. We're literally just going to <laughs> smother them and oh, keep them penned in. And the yeah. thing is, you can't go long because initially it was Rashford and Dan James up front. Then you've yeah. got Tony. Now, Tony can hold up the ball, but, bruv, he's not a Garlow, bruv. He's not a yeah. Garlow. He's not Giroud. Giroud, bruv. When I tell you Giroud had Maguire in his back pocket, bruv, like, Maguire mm-hmm. was like that five-pound note in, <laughs> in, in, in Giroud's back pocket because he was, bruv, Giroud just showed levels. And my whole thing wow. is, is that when you look at, when you look at the fridge on toes and you look at Lindelof, you would think he would sit on Lindelof. Bruv, yeah. man said, who? This guy. This slabhead, bruv. This 80, <laughs> bruv, 80 million pound fraud, bruv. This 80 million pound fraud, bruv. He's like, hold on, let hold this. Bro, remember the backing in everything muscle. He's like, what muscle? What you think? Because you're big. You think because you're, you're big and you got a big head. Drew told him all that, and then man got out, and, and then man got out. No, no. To be fair, it wasn't Maguire on the first goal. It was Lindelof that got outpaced across the front post. Um, but it yeah, was Lindelof. It was, it was Lindelof that got outpaced on the front post. But I'm just yeah. like, come on, man. Like there was there was so much that went wrong yesterday, and but for me, the bigger picture is. This goes to show what I've been saying from time. The guy is not a coach. He should... Bro, if Oli could be a number two, I'd have him as a number two. Because him there hugging players, yeah, spudding them, yeah, like, yeah, happy days, like, yeah, I got my arm around you, that stuff. That's what a number two does, isn't it? Yeah. My number one, I want you putting cones out and saying this is the system or the style of play that we are going to do. Or... If Oli's going to be that number one, he needs to get a number two that actually knows what he's doing. Oh. It's as simple as that, bro. But yeah, ask more questions because like, I just I think I went on for like 15 minutes. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was good. <laughs> I loved it, but it's an honest thing because I'll tell, you what, I'll tell you what my thoughts are in terms of recently. I think the last three games is where United have been slowly and slowly teams are finding out how to play. And it happens because when Fernandez came, United became a bit more attacking. He definitely did, compared to when he wasn't there. Um, so teams now have to respond to United because they were used to United sitting back, hitting counter-attack. Every team, you're playing flipping Watford, counter-attacking Watford. You're playing flipping Norwich, you're trying to counter-attack Norwich. But when they got Fernandez, you guys played a bit more attacking because you got a player with a bit more guile. So teams were just trying to um, figure it out. So the last three games that I saw against Southampton, even against Villa before the like, contentious penalty, Mm. Um, and obviously against Palace teams have started to press United a bit high up the pitch they've started to man mark Fernandez, just like they did against Ch- um, last year with Chelsea and Jorginho you know taking a main man out of the, out of the line mm. and it's really impacted especially when you've got a coach like Oli who's got as you said no tactics um, one second yeah so yeah yeah, when you got a coach like Oli, who's got no tactics and you can't really adjust or respond, I think it's been coming. That defeat yesterday has been coming. It has. Uh, it has. Uh, it has. I want to get your thoughts on, though, why, even though Leicester lost the game yesterday, United are in the driving seat, did he still feel the need to make that many changes? Bro, so remember, bro, bro. those players came on anyway. So why didn't he just start with those players? And then you got five substitutes. I get, I, I get it. I get it. Don't get me wrong, because if you look at, um, especially away at Palace, uh, one player that I could, there's two players that I saw that were tired, and one of them started yesterday. Wan Bissaka yeah. is tired. Oh. He's tired, right? Yeah. And Pogba was another one that was tired. So I can understand why he wanted to rotate, because I think the focus is on top four. It's not on That's the fair. FA Cup. Do you know what I mean? So I can, I can, I can understand it. But okay. my whole thing is, is that because of the, the lack of depth that we have in the team, he, 
this is one where, where in which I can feel kind of feel sorry for him, but I'm going to destroy him in the same at the same time <laughs> because he can't afford to drop players because the lack of depth they're not good enough for him to mm-hmm. do anything. But at the same time, bro, I think that midfield of Fred, Matic, and Fernandez, bro, look at bro Liverpool when they have Henderson, Wijnaldum, and Fabinho, bro. If you're looking just at ability alone, there's not much difference between the two midfields. And, what, and, and, and it's, bro, it's down to system and tactics. And uh-huh. they, the thing is, Liverpool's midfield know what they need to do, right? And they can bring in Naby Keita and there's no... Actually, Naby Keita actually makes a better midfield, right? Uh-huh. And they know what to do. And, and the Ox as well. Everyone knows their role and what to do in that system and where to move and tactics and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. How many times have we watched games and see Jordan Henderson playing in centre midfield, but then appear on the upper, on, on the right hand side, yep. so that Salah can move in? Because they mm-hmm. all know what to do. It's been well drilled. Man has been here for two years, and you still haven't seen no triangles, <laughs> no triangles, no triangles, no squares, no hexagons, <laughs> no octagons, no nothing, bruv. The only octagon that you can see at Old Trafford in, in, in any sport is in UFC, bruv, because Oli don't know what he's doing. <laughs> you know what I mean and ugh, bruv, it's, it's frustrating it is frustrating because as a United fan you have to accept the fact that the board ain't going to get rid of him yeah. which is why I can't I can't I don't even get upset anymore I don't even get upset anymore because I know as long as this man is there we're never going to get to levels and I know everyone will say oh but previously under Jose and under Louis van Gaal and blah 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 bro I looked at the table earlier right yeah, if we win, <laughs> uh, if we win both our games, that's sixty-eight yeah. points, right? I think last season we finished on sixty-six. In the last three seasons, sixty-eight points f- makes you finish six. <laughs> in the last three seasons, Crazy right? Season. So there's no improvement, yeah. right? It's only the fact that the league has gotten worse. I think last season. If you finish on 68, I think the gap was five points. Season before yeah. was eight. And the season before yeah. was like, what, seven from the top four or something like that. So there's been no improvement. It's just that the league mm-hmm. that in certain teams have gotten worse. So we're not going forward. The only thing that you can say is that he's got man on side and he's got man mm-hmm. on board. But my whole thing is, is that, and that's the only thing I can give him credit for, is that he's yeah. brought cohesion back into the team, right? And the fans aren't going against the team as much. But hear me and hear me now, bro. I already said, I done said it. I'm not expecting to win against West Ham, especially with the way how on. Bro, listen, if I'm a video really? and I just saw what Giroud did to have him do the fridge on toes, bro. I'm like, happy <laughs> days. Happy days, bro. You know what I, I mean? And, and, then, and then Leicester is just going to be difficult in itself. So, but I'm telling you this now. If we do get Champions League football, because it's a big if, yeah. And then we and then we bring in Jaden, and we bring in another centre midfielder, and we get rid of some guys. All these dumb fans, United fans, that think this guy is some sort of messiah when he's a fraud, bruv, are mm-hmm. going to get shown up because the man is not going to do nothing. I am fearful of going to the Champions League and then getting put in groups with teams that are half decent because they are going to tear us apart. Fridge on toes. <laughs> <laughs> bro, bro, one more thing, bro. Like, this is my last point on it, bro. My last point on Oli, yeah. bro. I'm just going to crucify him. Uh, <laughs> bro, uh, the Fat Frank has been in coaching two years, bro. Last year at Derby, nearly got them promotion. This yeah. year at Chelsea, um, top four looks like it could be, done, even though they got two difficult last games, the two last games are oh. difficult, but top four is in the offing and an FA Cup Bruv, that's, that's a success for his first full season in the Premier League. Uh, Teta's come in with Arsenal for, 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 what is it, five months? Is it five months? Uh, five February, months. Yeah. And, and I think only, if we count it together, probably only two months of the team actually playing Premier League football. And uh-huh. he can get them an FA Cup and you can see something happening, bruv. Oli's been managing for 11 years, fam. <laughs> Bro. And the fact of the matter is, from these two managers combined have what three what no two and a half years of coaching and being a manager between them and you can yeah. still st- see style of play you can see systems and they're on their way of tr- of trying to win a trophy right 
bro, Oli's claim to fame is winning in the Norwegian League, getting relegated by Cardiff, and yet and no silverware at United. Like it's it's pathetic, and the fact that the fans are so happy to accept this mediocrity is beyond me. But look, at the same time, we've been through having the big names, and it hasn't worked. Uh-huh. But my whole thing is, is that, because I think one fan said, uh, I think a couple of fans say, oh, if you take Poch, he hasn't won anything. Bro, at least we knew what he was doing at Spurs. Uh-huh. At least he, we knew what he was doing. All it is with Oli is, against the big teams, counter-attack, and against uh-huh. the, the middle teams and the low teams, individuals go out there and win me the game because I'm not going to tell you what to do because I don't know what to tell you what to do. Uh-huh. It's as simple as that. But, bruv, as I said, next year, if we get Champions League football, Jaden comes, we get a centre midfield, clear out a little bit. There's no excuses. There's nothing you can do anymore. And if you go on another terrible run like this in the league, right, what are you going to try and say to me, bruv? All these fans that are cheering all these names this season, next season we're going to come and we're going to be in the same boat. It's yeah, as simple as that. I fully agree. Just to, just to finish off, I fully agree. Um, as, as you know, and my fans know, I hate Man United with a passion. But... What's even why I hate even more as a coach is seeing another coach in there, especially a big team, not getting everything that he could out of the squad because you can clearly see they are not being coached in the right way in terms of stra- right now in football, especially Premier League football, it's about strategy. You have to people, the managers are playing chess out there. When you see Pep and Arteta on the touchline on Saturday. These guys were playing chess. Everything they were doing. <laughs> they were playing chess. Man like Ole. Like some octopus, some octopus, <laughs> bruv. Man like Ole is just old but school. But he sits there, sitting down. <laughs> sitting down, looking at that dumb screen, bruv, and then he walks down, like, at the drinks break. Man walks down at the drinks break, bruv, just to get a refreshment. Like, don't ask me what he's telling the players, because he can't be telling them anything, bruv. <laughs> so, um, just, just on that, how long would you personally give Ole in the in the job right now? Rob, you should have been sacked yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know my thoughts, Rob. You should have been sacked yesterday, Rob. And Rav you know yesterday, yesterday, I mean, like a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, Rob. Look, um, look, realistic, realistically, yeah, bro. He's got until December next okay. next season, yeah. because as I said, if, especially if we do make Champions League. And we can get the signings that we want. Bruv, yeah. there's no more excuses because if you bring Jaden in, and I said, if you can bring, like, just ideally for me, for me, if you could bring Jaden in, if we could actually get Thomas Partey, and if you brought in um, a half decent centre back, even a Nathan Ake, I'd take him, mm-hmm. right? Because it got, got, for a bit of pace to play with Harry Maguire. Yeah. And we got rid of some of the dead wood. So Phil Jones. Um, one matter as much as I like one matter his time's up at the club um, Dan James goes out on, on loan do you know what I mean like yeah. a couple couple players like that There's for me there's no more excuses because you got Jaden you'll have Jaden you'll have Tony and you have Rashford and then you've got the option of um, bringing in Mason and Agarlo so mm. there's strength and depth up top there you bring in Thomas Partey means Matic doesn't have to play every, every game uh-huh. So that gives him, him, him and Matic, Matic can alternate. And then you, could, you, you can rotate Pogba with Fred and that at, in, in the lower games and McTominay, right? Uh-huh. And you bring in a centre-back, someone to play with, Harry Maguire and then Lindelof. And even though I think I love Bae, but Bae is too injury-prone, but yeah, Bae as well. Right, right. And then at right-back, you've got Dallo. He needs to respect Dallo, but he doesn't like him. But uh-huh. Wan-Bissaka needs someone to rotate with. And then you've got, you got, um, you got the couch potato and Brandon Williams at left back, bruv. You know what I mean? And then the, the goalkeeper situation, bruv, bring Dean Henderson in. Henderson. Because bring Dean Henderson in, but Dean Henderson, mm-hmm. they're already negotiating for him to go back on loan at Sheffield United. Because Henderson's like, I'm not... But, I don't think nah, but Hend- Hend- Henderson's like, I'm not coming to play number two. He's like, I'm not coming to play number two, and I know you're not going to play me over De Gea. So, mm-hmm. just might as well send me back out on loan. And I don't blame him. I don't blame mm-hmm. him. I can also see Ramiro leaving because of the violation. Like how many mistakes does this guy have to make until, uh, until I can get a run, run in the side? So, as like I said, if all those things t- come together, no excuses. He's got till December. If December comes and we're in 7th or 8th, 
bro. All I'm going to say to them dumb United, Man United fans is, I told you so, in it, And other people have told you so as well on different channels. So I don't want to hear no, oh, this, that, and the other. And, oh, he doesn't this. Nah, nah, don't backtrack. Support your boy in it. Because we all know what's coming. And it's going to be nothing good, bro. Nothing good at all. But look, look, just to wrap up, can I just ask you, you both a question? You being an yeah. Arsenal fan and Tooth being a Newcastle fan. Do you fear Man United? No. Not the players, not not the players, but we're there. I don't. Going to I, St James's Park or going to the Emirates, and you know you're coming up against Oli. Do you fear Man United? That's the thing. I, I actually wanted to face United in the final over Chelsea, as I said, because we would have been in control of the game a bit more. And Ole, he relies too much on hit and hope. So <laughs> I would have been happier facing United than Chelsea. So nope, not at all. I remember. I remember, like, um, in sixth form, bruv, yeah? We went on a school trip to, like, fucking Brussels, I think. Yeah? yeah? And when we came back, Newcastle were playing fucking Man United. And I was on the train with a fucking United fan, bruv. By the time we got back to Wembley, yeah? yeah. Bruv, how can United have beat us, like, 8-1? <laughs> 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 the last game I remember watching between Newcastle and United, bro, my boy fucking Matty Longstaff scored, bro. The times have changed. <laughs> we're building out our fucking youth then, and they're banging in against United. Do you know what I mean? Whether it be yeah. Old Trafford or St. James's. So, do you know what I mean? But I can't, I can't. I'm not going to sit here and lie, bruv. The last few performances, obviously, bar the um, FA Cup semi-final, they yeah. haven't been too bad, bruv. Bruno, I mean, you even alluded to this previously, like uh, Pogba, um, uh, Bruno and Fred, they look like they can have a thing going on and it, it looked like it could work, give it time. But I get, uh, uh, but I completely agree with you. Like Oli is definitely not the, the guy to be running the ship. But bro, like listen, at work, one of my colleagues, he's a proper Oli in. You really? know, one of those guys, Oli in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? And, oh, okay. and bro, my man knows his football, bro. Trust me, my man is clued. Like he's one of them brothers that is clued on about all sports, bro. Yeah. He'll break it down. Do you know what I mean? I have F one discussions with him. I have fucking football discussions with him. Like. He, he's into cricket, he's into fucking rugby, he's into all of that good stuff. Mm. And bro, he was, giving, he was giving some decent points about Oli in, but the main one was give him time. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. I guess if some fans feel about it, feel strongly about it in that way, hmm. the United Do you, do you know what it is? Do you know what it is? You, you could know. give someone time. You could give yeah. someone time if there's a future. If they're, like for Arteta, I give him time. Emery, even at the beginning, I wasn't going to give him time because but, I knew his history. But, but, just to, but just to, but just to, but just to um, add to that, we just said like you know, if you have Jaden come in, yeah, right? of course, you know what I mean. And if if you and, and now finally we're seeing a bit of Pogba Bruno magic, yeah, in sparks here and there. Add Jaden to that. If, if Martial and Rashford hit form, and then obviously Greenwood and and James and those guys, if they can step it up next season, then you could be on the cusp of, you know, being like Oli out to all of a sudden riding Oli's nuts. Do you nah, know what I mean? bruv. <laughs> Never that, bruv. Never that, bruv. To, 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 listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realistic guy. The, the reason why a man like Klopp got time, right, at Liverpool yeah. is because they could see what he was trying to do. That's my yeah. issue. If yeah. I could see what Oli was trying to do and he was building something in terms of style of play and tactics, then 100% I'd, be, I'd back him and be behind him. But I can't see that. And the TJ, thing is that... TJ, do, do you think when um, Jaden uh, Sancho comes in, yeah, from being schooled yeah. at Man City and, and Borussia Dortmund with all that knowledge of tactics and, you know, high football IQ and then he comes in at United's Oli and Oli's just like, yeah, we're going to get for a coffee. <laughs> Bro, Jada's going to be like, so hold on. Okay, so this is your tactics. You just want me to go out there and do what I want. 
<laughs> I'm just gonna go out there and do what I want, bruv. After he's been working at Dortmund and they're all, bruv, they're doing cutting shapes, all sorts of shapes of Dort- Dortmund parallel- parallelograms and all sorts. <laughs> and this guy's and this guy's gonna come in and he's gonna be like, oh, so you just basically want me to do what I want? All right then. Fuck, like it don't make no sense. Like even coming out of the Man City Academy, even when yeah. he was there, Pep had started doing his thing, so he was under that. And he's come up through this. And German football, we all know what German football is about, and how they, how they how they produce so much youth abroad and in their own country. And then you're gonna come to Man United, and man's just gonna be like, "All right, cool, do what you want to do, just win me the game." And that's the whole thing. Like with Klopp, you could see what he was doing, and it was a team game. Yeah. Oli's actually sending people out there, and it being individuals. So don't be wrong. The better individuals you have, the more chances you have of winning. Like yeah. don't get me wrong, but there's only so far that can get you in this era. As we've alluded to, the era of individuals is is nearly dead now. As we can see, uh, uh, Messi at Barcelona, even though he wasn't really individual, but we, we know what we're talking about. And CR7 even struggling at Juventus. Like the era of individuals is over now. It's all about team football and making uh, 50 million pound players into 150 million pound players and 30 million pound players into 80 million pound players. That is what it is now. And the only way you can do that is through proper systems and proper tactics. Because that's what football will become. So, but we'll see what happens. Holly's here to say. Um, but yeah, bro, to answer your question, Rav, he's got till December. And then I, I know for a fact that if we're in the same position we were in December this season, mm. uh, uh, um, next season as we were last season, Rav, you'll still get United fans still saying Oli in, bruv. But we can be 17th and you've got stupid United fans still saying Oli in, bruv. But the ones that have a little bit of common sense will be like, the ones that are in the middle are like, oh, I need to sort of man- support the manager, but I'm not sure. They'll turn. Yeah. They will turn. It's as simple as that because there's no progress. Bring in Poch, bruv. Before he goes <laughs> to Juve. Before he goes to Juve because Sarri's messing us up there as well, bruv. But we won't get into that. <laughs> just, just to go, go into the next point, um, I believe United will get, will just about to scrape forth. I think Leicester's season is over. I think you guys will at least get a point at West Ham. So I think you guys will scrape forth. Um, As you alluded to, going into the Champions League isn't all that may crack up to be. You will go into there facing better teams. You may be showed up. Um, So that's a thought. Um, Which goes into our next topic, which is the Champions... Actually, no. Actually, it goes into another topic, actually. Just before we go, we just go into the next topic, is that would you, considering he just came out today and said he doesn't know where his future lies, take the man, the legend, Zidane Zidane at United? <laughs> We're talking about a guy that has won, he's the, I think, third or second most successful manager in Real Madrid history. And I'm not talking about no, no other club. I'm not talking about Arsenal, Chelsea, you know, club with just these recent um recent history. I'm talking about Real Madrid, the top of the top hey, when it comes to winning. Just, you know, just jump in, yeah. You know why he's not, you know why he's not gonna go to United, bro. It's very simple. Right. right. He's, he, he's coming to Newcastle, bro. That's <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, maybe, maybe. Bruh, if, you can pull, if, if you lot can pull that off, yeah, bro, I'll shake them, <laughs> them, them, them shakes hands myself, bro. I'll be like, Newcastle are back. <laughs> Would you no. take the legend that is Zidane, Zidane at United? <laughs> bro, everyone, like, you don't know my thoughts on Zidane, in it. Like, I respect what he has won. You cannot deny what the man has won, especially, I think, the second Champions League, like that was that was like he put the work in with the team and did it that way. But as for the first, of, they should have never won the first. They should have never won the third. And La Liga, they Barca threw it away. I don't believe Real Madrid won it. And for me, it's a case of I haven't seen Zidane this season in La Liga to comment, but I heard they were absolutely awful in the beginning and. The previous Champions League wins I put down to uh, the likes of Sergio Ramos, Luka Modric um, being in their prime. And then when you have CR7, you're always going to have a chance. So I put, listen, I put Zidane in kind of mode of Oli, bruv. What? 
bro, what are you talking about, man? I don't think there's any tactics there whatsoever. Uh, it's the, hold on, wait, let me finish. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not hold on. What was it dad in the same fucking category? No, bro. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, so in that sense, but don't get me wrong, I know Zidane has a footballing brain and I believe that the guys underneath him, the coaches, are the ones yeah. doing the drills and stuff. But especially that first and third Champions League win, bro, if Atletico yeah. doesn't throw the game away and I think, what was it in the third one? What happened? I can't remember what happened in the, th the third Champions League win. I'd have to, I'd have to the, second, the third one was a penalty shootout. The first one is when I think they, they scored in they scored last, in the last minute in the first yeah, one. Yeah, last and minute and then they, they won in our And then Gareth time. Bell Gareth Bell won in extra yeah, time. Yeah. But the third one yeah, I can't remember. Third one penalty shoot penalty shootout. Yeah, they, Ramos scored an equalizer. Was it equalizer or he scored from ahead? I can't remember. But it's one one, then it went to penalties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ramos, Ramos scored. I think it was the winner. I can't I No, no, not the winner. Not the third one was a penalties. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, as I said, I, I put the that. Rematch, the rematch was on penalty. Yeah. The rematch was on penalties. Yeah. 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 Listen, I've got to jump in here, yeah, because I've got to rebuttal a lot of that shit. Oh, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Let me finish. I haven't finished. I haven't finished. But, <laughs> so, I think he's got the coaches, un the coaches underneath him are obviously doing a, go a good job. But, bro, yeah. even this last one, as I said, like Barcelona, because all the problems that they've got, we can't even touch on that right now. But, they threw it away. Real Madrid didn't win it. They just took advantage of a very, very bad situation um, at Barcelona. Barcelona. Basically, Barcelona's worse than theirs. And <laughs> they took advantage of that. Do you know what I mean? So, would I take Zidane over Oli? Of course I would, because Oli's dog... <laughs> yeah, Oli, Oli's absolute garbage. And I think the reference... All right, fair enough. The reference between Oli and Zidane is purely based on I don't think they're master tacticians. It's not a case of they're on any sort of levels. Let me just put that in there before Tooth tries to bite my head off. I'm not saying they're on any <laughs> levels, but from what I've, what I've seen, like in terms tactically wise, I don't see yeah. a lot. But one thing that he has done is he's galvanized yeah. the players, got them together and got them playing very, very well. And if he's got the coaches underneath him to do it, then that's why that system works and why Ollie's doesn't. That's what I'm oh. saying. But would I take him 100% over Oli? I would. Yes, I mean, sir. bruv, his, 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 his trophy collection alone puts him over Oli already, bruv. Well, and obviously, well, obviously, well, obviously, well, obviously, man's, man's like up there, top 10, top 10 of all time as well, bruv. So, you know. First thing, yes, Tooth. First thing I have to address, bruv, is that you fucking said, yeah. I'm happy you backtracked on this, bro. <laughs> at the end. But you fucking said, see, Dan and Ole are in the same mock lad, bro. I need to know what you're, what you're taking, bro. Whatever medication you're on, bro. Throw it my way, bro. You know what I mean? That shit is strong. Listen, bro. In, as a player, nor as a manager... Ole is not even a fucking pubic hair on Zidane's <laughs> left testicle, bro. Oh! Do you know what I mean? Zidane has achieved everything there is as a player and as a manager. I don't and doubt that. Now, yeah, I, I mean, like, it's, it's there. Do you know what I mean? His, his honours are there to see. And obviously, I'm taking the piss. I obviously know you don't think Oli is like <laughs> as a player or as a manager is nah, no chance. Is, is in the, even in the same breath as Zidane, of course, but still, um, yeah. As far as Zidane goes, yeah. So if we're talking about Zidane in terms of what he's achieved, bro, yeah, yeah. I mean, we can get we can get nitpicky and say a lot of things. We can say Zidane got very fortunate with the squad he inherited. We can oh. say Zidane got very fortunate by having um ungodly player in his you know in his wings and um, we can say Madrid got very fortunate with decisions you know they didn't have VAR at the time and all of that refereeing wow. nonsense and, let's you know, not get into that today <laughs> yeah no we won't but you know we, we can say all these yeah 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 yeah, yeah. We can, we can yeah. Throw all these darts out there mm. but none of them will stick because at the end of the day like mm. even with all of those um, 
advantages. He still pulled off probably the best, if if not the best, run in Champions League. Mm. The hardest tournament there is ever. Uh-huh. Period. Three in a yeah. row. Smash did they not win? Did they not win five in a row? No, three. They won one under Ancelotti. Um, next season, I think. No, years ago, years ago, years ago, like this, this, this is the final. Oh, the European around. Cup? No, 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 no. No, oh, no? were the first to win. No, 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 oh. but no. That's a, didn't they win like five in a row or something like some madness like that? Yeah, Real Madrid. Madrid. probably. Like in the. I don't think it was the European Cup. I, caught, uh, I remember seeing um, unless another unless different managers won it, but Zidane is the first manager to have won. Three Champions League. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, yeah, Chief, carry on. Yeah, back, back to my point. So, yeah, maybe not yeah. three in a row, but, you know, he, he definitely smashed the record mm. in terms of uh, the number of Champions League won. Okay. And that as a rookie. You know, we've got managers that have been doing this shit for years and that haven't mm. even got close to that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we can go through the, the, like, you know, we could pull up names like Ancelotti's and... Um, Johan Cruyff. Hey, Ancelotti's a free time win as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah bro. I mean, we could go in deep, but but the point is, he done it. Do you know what I mean? He mm. done it better than Pep. He done it better than Mourinho. He done it better than Sir Alex Ferguson. He done it better than fucking all of them. Johan Cruyff. He done he done it better than you name the manager. He's still done it better than, and he done it all while learning on the job as a rookie, like That's within true. the inception of his career. Now, this is the thing. People say how easy he had it, but you have to look at actually how difficult he, he really had it. Like I said, this was his first job, yeah? He wasn't prime or groomed to take the position. He was always in the wings as like a B-team coach or an assistant coach. And he was at first viewed as, I'm sure, as a caretaker dude. You know what I mean? Just spend a little bit of time in there until they get someone more. Yeah, I think he was actually. Yeah, exactly. He was meant to be a caretaker dude on some Di Matteo shit. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, she won the Champions League, man. Fuck. Do you know what I mean? But the point is, you know, he had a lot of hurdles to overcome. So one of them being the, the immense pressure that he was under to succeed with that Madrid team for all the reasons okay. that I just listed. He inherited okay. a, a strong team. He had Ronaldo, X, Y, Z. Furthermore, Madrid are always, they're on a Bayern level, Barcelona level. Every competition they're in, it's about winning silverware. Point blank, period. It doesn't matter how. You just have to get... You, if it has to be smash and grab, if they have to have Mourinho to come in and do, do some smash and grab shit, if they need for, uh, Fabio Capello to come in and do some one nil football shit to win the title, they will do it. They're all about titles, silverware. Mm. They don't change that mantra. Now, for Zidane to do that, again, as a rookie... With all those Champions League, bro, it's hard to it's hard to like discredit him for that. And I think to a certain extent, like we have to judge his career based on what we what we know of it. So he came and he was handed that Madrid team, and he made wonders of that team. Do you know what I mean? It's it's almost basically what I'm trying to say and, and make a comparison to is. Pep Guardiola, people always say, oh, he came in, he, he had fortune, this, that, and the other. But no, it still took an element of hard work, experiment in making shit work in order to hit those heights. Now, personally, the reason why I think those two were so successful, Pep and Zidane, was both of them came through the ranks at Madrid, right? Uh-huh. They, they both were, to some, to some extent... Um, especially referring to Guardiola during his playing career, were superstars. We all know Zidane was just a megastar. Do you know what I mean? So they understand the fabric of the club. They also uh, understand the history, the expectations of the club. But also, they have been in those big boots. Do you know what I mean? Where they're competing for um, titles and, in Zidane's case, World Cups and Ballon d'Ors. Do you know what I mean? So for them, when when they come across a team that's littered, with fucking FIFA 11 players. Do you know what I mean? Like, from, from Tony Cruz to, to you, like, superstars. It's easier for them. It might be easier for them to get the best out of those players than certain other um, coaches. Two. And, that's, yeah. Two. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what would you say about um, TJ's point on, um, on his coaching, though? Um, as I said, I think his trophies are unrivaled. Is there 
But what would you say about his point on his coaching? Um, I was literally, I was literally, and, and that's exactly what I was going to touch upon. But, and yeah. I think, to, to just give you the short answer to that, is basically yeah. what he achieved this season. He won, he won the league after coming back from a hiatus. Do you know what I mean? He, he went away, came back. He more or less inherited the same team in terms of the core team, mm-hmm. and he still won the league. Man, now, I know Barca were away, bro. And you know me, boys. I'm a Barca. I'm a Barca fan. Do you know what I mean? I'm I'm Barca through and through. But I have to give credit where credit is due in terms of Zidane and, and looking at it impartially is that, bro, Barca had a strong lead at the beginning of the season. Uh-huh. They were more or less going to win the league and they just basically threw it away. However, we have to look at Madrid at the beginning of the season. They were in a rut as well. Uh-huh. They were stinking. They mm. were totally cat. And that's what I mean. A, a manager like that, knowing the fabric of the club, knowing how to talk to players, being a superstar himself, being in those positions where, you know, you're meant to be challenging, but you're actually trying to fucking just barely keep it in, in the top four. He's been there himself. So that's why he can get the best out of those players. And by him coming back and exceeding all expectations and winning the fucking league, bro. Um, <laughs> I think that's, that, that's just, for me, just proven... He is the real deal. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying he can go to somewhere like fucking Bayern Munich and make it work. <laughs> I was just about Maybe to say that. he can. I'm not saying... I'm, and I'm def- yeah, and I'm definitely not saying he can go to fucking Scunthorpe United and build a fucking <laughs> team up. Like, you know, from, from the ground up. Like, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying for what he has achieved with the cards that he was dealt, he smashed it. Truth, what do you think? I'm, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle of both of you. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I fully actually understand where both of you are coming from. Like, I know what he's saying in terms of he doesn't know how good of a coach Zidane really is. And I don't think anyone actually really knows how good of a coach Zidane really is because from a football analyst point of view, you look at the Madrid side, and they have the quality all over the place. You see, the difference between United and Madrid is that Madrid have a quality 11. Any one of those players, you know, they're good enough to go and win a game on their own. United Except don't. for Marcelo. <laughs> hey, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm a Marcelo hater, but he, he's a baller, you know. He can ball. Nah, he can that, ball. That, that, what's, that, what's, that what's, that, what's that guy, that Filippo Mendy, bro, or whatever his name is? Oh, Mendy. Yeah, he's hard. I know, I know, he's coming, he's coming down and sick as well. So on, on, on that basis, um, I'm in both of I don't know how good Zidane is as a coach. But then as a coach myself, I can't really go and say his numbers just speak for itself. Like, it is it's ridiculous. Like, and winning the league, look, winning the league is the hardest thing. That's 38 games. You have to go be the most consistent team for 38 games. And that's what he done twice. Not once, twice. Remember, he won it. Mm, yeah, he won it. Second um, season as well. The sec- that's, what, that's, why, that's why I gave credit to that second season. Rob, they're doing the, the double of the league in the Champions League. I know. He went levels. And I'm saying maybe there is a place in current football for just a manager. Remember, Alex Ferguson was a great manager. Manager, yeah. Um, many people said, though, he wasn't a great coach. You know, he didn't coach people. He had his team for that. Um, but he was a great, great manager. Um, maybe Zidane's a bit old school. Maybe he's there and he is that great manager and you don't need to have, need to be a great coach if you do have that coaching team around you. Maybe that's the thing what Zidane is. But yeah, um, yeah. So I'm in the middle. I agree with both of you. Don't know how good he is. Um, if he was to go United, I'd be scared of United because it's Zidane in it. <laughs> he could get that team playing, you know. And, you know, yeah, he's man, been there, done that. You know, and, well, you, and, you know, and, you, and you know he wants Pogba as well. Exactly, you know, it was probably, yeah. Well, bruv, listen, this is, this is what I just wanted to add as well. We have to bear in mind here. This is how, again, just maybe a few points just to reiterate how good of a yeah. season he had. When he came into the Madrid job, yeah, bruv, Madrid had spent um, a fortune on getting Luka Jovic and uh, Eden Hazard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Club. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they were trying to actually, at the time, like, they were seriously trying to get um, Killian in and uh, Killian Mbappe in yeah. as well. He, 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 and, he will end up there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Paul Pogba as well. They were seriously mm-hmm. trying to get Pogba in as well. Now, they didn't get the, the latter of the two, but they did get 
Jovic and Hazard. And both of them were tremendously, like, f- falling short of expectations. Well, sure. Do you know what I mean? And then by the time Zidane had got in there, he had, he had kind of, like, found the balance between playing the veterans that were there while he was there at his first team, so the core players, as well as some of the new signings and some of the academy players that had come through and broken into the first team. Now, if you look at the stats, it's almost like a perfect harmony in terms of rotation. It's almost like one game Marcelo played and then one game Mendy played. And that was like the whole squad. Do you know what I mean? Like he, he kept rotating the squad. And then also at the same time, he got the best out of some of these players yeah. that were considered past their prime. So like he got the best season out of Benzema and he got the best season out of, um, I forgot there was someone else as well. Um, I think. Madrid, I think it's Ramos. Varane. <laughs> yeah, Ramos, yeah. He's got, I don't, I don't yeah. hate Ramos at all, but he's getting the best out of him. I'm not a Ramos fan. And, and, and that's what I mean. And like he answered the question that was on everyone's mind, which was, can that Madrid team survive without a Ronaldo? And then uh-huh. especially certain players like Benzema. Like now that Ronaldo's gone, can he sort of carry the weight of fulfilling the attacking duties that were um, left behind by Ronaldo and getting all those uh-huh. goals? And he did. He smashed it this season. I think it was Madrid's top, uh, top goal scorer. And that's what I mean. A, a coach like Zidane can do that. Maybe it has to be in specific Settings like it may, it, it might, like I said earlier, it, it might just only work at Madrid, uh-huh. you know what I mean. But I do believe he does have a tactical mind about him. We have to bear in mind, as a footballer, bro, this guy was a fucking genius. <laughs> <laughs> he was a fucking like, let's not even fuck around. The guy was a genius, so we can't be like expecting, oh, now that he's going into. He's gone into management. He's on some Steve Bruce flex, bro. Just kick and rush. Do you know what I mean? Now, we can't be expecting that. I'm, I, I have a bit more faith in his management skills because I know as a player, he was a fucking... I'll tell you what. We'll, 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 we'll have to see because I would love him to go to another job where he doesn't, where he doesn't have these players and see what he does. Because I said, I, I, the jury's out there. The Jews out there for me. Um, for me, he's not a pep. I don't see him tactically organising his team. But on the other hand, as I said, trophy cabinet speaks for himself. Speaks but bro, himself. but that's why. But that's where the difference between both of them lies because Pep came up through La Masia, right? Yeah. So they have that structure and that history Im- embedded in in the clubs like youth academies all the way up until the first team. Whereas oh. in Madrid. It's the Galacticos culture. Their whole, mm-hmm. their whole history is based off buying the best players. Super and strong, bearing, this yeah. goes all the way back to Di Stefano. Do you know what I mean? They always love the best player. And that's what um, Zidane is. He is yeah. he's not, a, he's not a, um, a youth academy Madrid player. He never was. He was a superstar that was brought in. And that's why, again, their, their careers are so similar in the sense that they were both gifted superstar teams the way i like to look at it is like bro just imagine if if a kid that goes that's born into a very wealthy family and that child ends up going to the best private school there is and then best private high school and then ends up going to oxford and then ends up becoming like a re- really fucking like do you know what i mean whatever yeah mm. they we we can't Turn around and then be like, oh yeah, yeah let's give him. Do you know what I mean? Oh, like he was right. never destined for that. Whereas yeah. other managers just came up through the ranks. Do you know what I mean? They had to do that nine to five shift. They had to bust their ass and go like, you know, um, work overtime and get a second job and then quit that job and then get fired from another job. And then do you know what I mean? And then eventually make it work. But the Mourinho's, the Peps, the Zidane's, or maybe you can say you maybe you can forgive Mourinho because that. Porto team was definitely don't put, not Marine, don't put Mourinho in that, in right. that same kind of but style for the rest that, of in that class fam I'm really yeah. sorry I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm really yeah. sorry I'm really sorry I'm really I'm sorry he I'm sorry
But the point I'm trying to make was basically yeah, no, I understand. Like, those, yeah, 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 yeah. No, those no, managers no. that we see, you know what I mean? The, those managers yeah. that we always say that they're, they're given the luxury of having the best players or the best teams or having yeah. the ideal conditions and all of that is like, I think it's sometimes a bit, um, they, they reach for it a bit too much sometimes, like for that argument. Cool, so, you know, that's going to be an argument for a different day, Zidane. <laughs> <laughs> how good he is as a manager so you know time will tell um so when the time comes yes indeed it is a conversation for a different day and as the seasons go on we will find out whether or not Zidane is that guy or he's just been lucky with the cards that he's been dealt but yes that is it for us for now Thank you to my guys, The Truth and Tooth. Another Peace. good episode. Tune in next week for the end of the Premier League. We'll see where everybody ends up. And don't forget, uh-huh. we've still got the FA Cup final. We've still got the UFC. The NBA is coming back. We've got plenty more content to put out. But to my guys, peace. Hey, hey, listen. Stay you tuned, the most Stay tuned. Thing. You forgot the most important thing, bro. What's that, bro? Your boy Dilly and White versus Converse. <laughs> <laughs> Dilly and Wright. In Can't Eddie wait. Garden, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. We got boxing as well, bro. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace. peace.